Welcome back. Hey guys, it's Rishi once again. And today we're gonna to be going through writing and simplifying ratios. So in this video, you'll be learning how to simplify ratios, write ratios, and also solve complex problems that will allow you to think logically and also make you apply some level of reasoning. And just like our previous video, please feel free to go ahead and pause at any stage, attempt the question, and then press play as I go through the solutions. So without further ado, let's go ahead and give this an attempt. Okay, question number one. So write down the ratio of 350 to 25 centimeters in the simplest form. So now the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and write this out and then find a common number between 350 and 25. Well, we know that 25 goes into both numbers. So that's our highest common factor. So we divide both sides by 25, which will then give us 14 to one. And so that is now our answer, 14 to one. Now you could have gone ahead and seen that five is common between both. So we could have taken a step to divide both by five. So we know that would give us five. And we know 35 divided by five will give us seven. And then bringing that zero down, that is 70 to five. But then we would need to see how many times five goes into 70. So if we have 70 divided by five, we know five goes into 70 once with a remainder of two, and five goes into 24 times. And that will then give us 14 to one, which is the same answer we had previously. So no matter if you cover this in one step or in two steps, as long as you get the same answer, that is what we require. Okay, question number two. Let's now write the ratio of 220 to five kg in the simplest form. So again, I'm going to take five as my highest common factor and then divide both sides by five. We know that would give us one and we know 220 divided by five gives us 44. So overall, our answer will now be 44 to one. And let's just check this. 220 divided by 44. Well, 44 doesn't go into, well, we know that 22 is a half of 44. And so that way, that is another clue to give us five as our answer. And there we are. So let's now dive into question three. Alex has the following coins. And we now need to write the ratio of the value of Alex's 20p coins to the value of Alex's 50p coins. So now considering we have two 20p coins, that gives us 40p, and three 50p coins gives us 150. The first thing I would do is take away the zeros, and that would give us 4 to 15. And then I would see, is there any way we can simplify 4 to 15? Well, in this case, we can't. So we'll leave it as 4 to 15. Okay, question number four. So now write the ratio of 32 to 24 in its simplest form. So again, we need to find the highest common factor here, which in this case would be eight. So we divide both sides by eight. So 32 divided by eight gives us four and 24 divided by eight gives us three. So that question is four to three. But part B states that one ninth of people in the class are left-handed. So write a ratio of left-handed people to right-handed people. So the first thing to understand is that the total is nine. So if one over nine is left-handed, then again, we know that eight over nine must be right-handed because eight plus one gives us nine. Therefore, if we cross this out, we are left with one to eight as our ratio. Okay, question number five. So write the ratio of 15 to 35 in its simplest form. So again, what are we gonna look for? The highest common factor and that's gonna be five. So if we go ahead and divide both sides by five, that will give us three to seven, and that is our answer. And now part B states that there are red shapes and blue shapes in a box. So two over three are red. So let's go ahead and work out how many are going to be blue. So we know we have two over three that are red, and the total is our denominator, which is three. So two plus one gives us three. So we know that one over three is gonna be our blue. So now we can go ahead and cross out our denominator. We're left with now two to one. 
So two red shapes and one blue shape. Okay, 6a. Write the ratio of 81 to 27 in its simplest form. So again, the highest common factor between 81 and 27 is 9. So we'll divide both sides by 9. So 81 divided by 9 gives me 9. And 27 divided by 9 gives me 3. But is that the simplest form? I don't think so. So now we need to find a number that is common between 9 and 3. And we know it's both divisible by 3. So let's divide this by 3. And that will give us 3 to 1. So in the simplest form, the answer will be 3 to 1. Okay, part B. 3 eighths of the chocolate in a box are white chocolate. So what do we know? We know that 3 are going to be white for every 8 we have. And remember, 8 is our total now. So if we have 3 over 8 that are white, we know that 5 over 8 are going to be milk. And that is because 3 plus 5 gives us 8. So again, let's take away the denominators. And we're now left with 3 to 5. And that is our answer. Okay, 7a. Write the ratio of 24 to 72 in its simplest form. So we know that they're both divisible by 8. So we'll divide both by 8 which gives us 3 to 9. And then again, the divisible by 3, which then gives us 1 to 3. So our answer here is 1 to 3. And now part B. In February, it rained on 3 over 7 of days. Write the ratio of the days it rained to the days of numbers it did not rain. So I hope you can see this is very much the same as all the previous questions. We've got 3 over 7. So for it not to rain must be 4 over 7 because in total, they give us seven. So let's now go ahead, cross out our seven, and we're left with three to four. Okay, don't forget to pause the video, attempt the questions before going through it with myself. But for those who are able to continue, let's go ahead. So again, the same case as before for these two questions, we're now going to write this ratio in the form of n to one. So, Step one always remains the same. Find the highest common factor, which in this case is 2.5. So we'll divide it by 2.5. And we know that 2.5 goes into 7.5 three times. So that would be three to one. So again, for this question, let's find the highest common factor and let's go for six. So now dividing both by six, we will get two and five. And if we simplify that, that would be 1 and 2.5. So we now know our n is going to be 2.5. And question number 10. So there are some cubes in a bag, and one sixth of the cubes are red. And so the rest of the cubes are blue, which are going to be 5 over 6. So now if we put that in a fraction here, cross out our denominators, we're now left with 1 to 5. And that's the ratio of red cubes to blue cubes in the form of 1 to n, where 1 is our red. Question number 11. So there are only blue counters, red counters, and yellow counters in a bag. And so now there are twice as many blue counters as yellow counters. So if we have blue to yellow, we know there's twice as many. So we've got 2 to 1. It then states that there are three times as many red counters to yellow counters. So for every three red counters, there are one yellow counter. And let's now write down the ratio of blue counters to red and to yellow. So the first thing we need to do is combine these together. Let's have our blue, our red, and our yellow. So we know blue is two, red is three, and yellow is one. And that is now our answer. Two to three to one. So the best thing is always to write out what the sentence is saying. Thereafter, you can put it together and that way it'll be easier to get a more accurate answer. Question number 12. There are only green pens, black pens and red pens in a box. So now there are four times as many green pens as black pens. So we'll have four to one and twice as many red pens to green pens. So as we know that our green pens are seen as four, we know that the red is twice as many as green pens. So that gives us eight to four. 
So now if we put this together, we have our green, our black, and our red. We know our green is four. We know our black is one. And because there is twice as many red pens as green pens, it's going to be eight. So if we put that together, that's four to one to eight. Marvelous. Let's go over to question 13. So Charlotte, Joe and Mike played a game and Charlotte scored four times as many points as Joe. So again, Charlotte's four and Joe is one. And Mike's scored half as many points as Charlotte. So if Charlotte's is four, half of that will be Mike, which is now two. So if we put this together as Charlotte, Joe and Mike, we know Charlotte has four, Joe has one, and Mike has two. And that is our final answer. Okay, question 14. Now there are 120 people in a school canteen. And half of the people in the canteen in year 11 are in year 11. So we'll go ahead and work out a half 120, and we know that's 60. And then the number of year 11 students in the canteen is three times the number of year 10 students. So again, we can go ahead and divide that by three. So we now know that there are 20 year 10 students. And the rest of the people in the canteen are year nine students. So we know if 20 are year 10 students, then the remaining 40 would be year nine students. So now the number of year nine students to the number of year 10 students is n to one. So firstly, let's write our total is 60. And from this, we have 20, which is year 10, and 40, which is year nine. And that gives us 60 in total. But now it's asking us to put this in the ratio of n to one. So we know there are 40 year nine and 20 year 10. We know that our highest common factor is 20. So we divide both sides by 20, which gives us one to two. And as that is in the form of what we require, we now know that n will equal to two because we've already got our one, so n would be two. Okay, let's move on to the next section. And this is the last two questions that we have for you today. So in a bag, there are blue sweets, red sweets, and yellow sweets. So blue, red, and yellow. And the number of red sweets is three times the number of blue sweets. So now we know if blue is one, red is going to be three. And the number of yellow sweets is half the number of red sweets. So again, we know if red is three, yellow is gonna be a half, which is 1.5. But now we need to write the ratio of blue sweets to red sweets and to yellow sweets, which is what we've done. But this time they're asking us to put the answers in whole numbers. So we are going to have to multiply this entire section by two. So we get two, six, and three. And now that satisfies the question. So our answer is two to six to three. And over to the final question. In a bag, there are blue sweets, red sweets, and yellow sweets. And now the number of blue sweets is four times the number of yellow sweets. So again, blue is four and yellow will have as one. And now the number of red sweets is half the number of yellow sweets. So half of one is gonna be 0 0.5. And once again, but now this time, they're asking us to work out the percentage of sweets that are yellow. So let's get the total of these sweets here. And by doing so, I'm going to make them into whole numbers first. So that will give me eight, two, and one. If I add them up, that gives me 11. So I know 11 is my total. And if I take a look at yellow here, this is this section, we know it's gonna be two over 11. So how do I find the percentage of sweets that are yellow now? So the first thing I'm going to do is have two over 11 times by 100. So when you're multiplying fractions with whole numbers, you simply multiply the numerator with the whole number. So two times 100 is 200 divided by 11. You can either write the answer out as a fraction, or if you want to be more precise, you could go ahead and work out the division to this. So 200 divided by 11. So does 11 go into two? No, it doesn't. 
Does it go into 20? Yes, it does. It goes in once with a remainder of nine. And then we ask how many times does 11 go into 90? Well, we know 11 times eight is 88. So we'll put eight there and we'll put our 88 and we'll subtract it. And that will give us two. Again, we'll say, does 11 go into two? No, it doesn't. So now this time you put a zero, a zero, and a zero for our place value. Again, 11 goes into 20 once with a nine remainder. And then again, we know that 11 doesn't go into nine, but it goes into 98 times. And as you can see, this repeats. So it's 18.18 .18 recurring, and that would be your percentage. So there we are, 18.18 .18 or 200 over 11. Amazing work. We've now come to the end of this chapter. I must say, in under 20 minutes, we've now gone ahead and completed an entire topic of writing and simplifying ratio. Keep an eye out on our channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment below if you have any questions or if you would like me to focus on a particular content more. You've done amazing work coming this far. So keep up the good work and I'll see you in the next one.